previous videos, you have seen us use division, synthetic and long division, in order to divide two polynomials. I want you to keep that same thing in mind because we're going to be using synthetic division to find other factors. The idea is that you're going to use the zeros and synthetic division in order to find remaining factors and then you can factor completely. So the first step that you want to do is using the function on your calculator you're going to want to enter it in and you're going to want to set up your window and graph it. Now for this one since um, we've been doing the calculators a lot I'm not going to set up the window I'm just going to assume that you know what that is but those of you who want to know I have set up the window to the standard so this is negative 10, this is positive 10, positive 10, and negative 10. And the idea of setting up the window is that you have this nice curve. You can see your zeros, and you can see where your function is going as x nears negative infinity, and where, you're at, where, you're in, where your function is going as x is increasing in the positive direction. So we're seeing a decrease, we're seeing an inc increase, and also, you're going to want to start getting familiar with the shapes of the graph. So this shape is a cubic function, so you can see that this is the entire graph in the window. We're going to use the zero function on the calculator, like we did with the, poly with the quadratics. We're going to set up the left bound, which is to the left of the zero there and then the right bound, which is going to be to the right of the zero there. You can see that your two arrows, if we drop down lines at those arrows, those, those create the boundaries. And your calculator is going to say, OK, I'm going to look for an input that produces an output of zero starting here and stopping there. And so we get that the zero is negative 1. We really only need one zero because we have a cubic function and we know we could get it down to a quadratic and we could probably factor the quadratic. So we're going to set up the synthetic division. The zero goes on the outside. Then we take the coefficients from the polynomial in the order, in descending order of the exponents. So make sure that your polynomial is in standard form before you start setting this up. We're going to bring down the first term, the first uh, number. Multiply the 0 by this first number. Then we're going to add. And then we're going to multiply again. Then we're going to add and then multiply again and then finally add. Now our resulting polynomial starting with the next lowest factor. Now remember, think of this. We basically took 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3 and divided by x plus 1. That's what this synthetic division does. So that means that our first term here in our, in our quotient would be like taking 2x cubed and dividing by x. That's going to give us 2x squared. Then we're going to have a minus 5x and then a plus 3. In step number 3, we want to factor completely. That means that the factor, the resulting factor of dividing one of the factors by the original polynomial in step number two is going to give us a factor. And we want to make sure that we can continue to factor this. What tells me that probably we're going to be able to factor more is we have a cubic here, we get a quadratic here, and most likely it's going to be factorable. So we're going to be looking for factors of 2x squared that combine with factors of 3 to make negative 5x. 
Now, I've already done a few tests of this already, so I know that if I take 2x minus 3 times x minus 1, it's going to be 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. I know this because I only need to check, test the middle term. 2x times negative 1 is going to give me negative 2x, and if I subtract 3x from that, I get negative 5x. And we want to write out the entire polynomial in intercept form. That means that we can write out the polynomial, which we're going to call p of x, and that's going to be equal to our factor that we get from our zero that we found on the calculator plus the factors that we found with synthetic division and then continuing to factor. Another example where we can use um, synthetic division to find factors is in this example. We have a hexagonal prism with a height of x plus 2 and a volume of x to the fourth minus 16. Now the idea, every time that we have an area, we basically would have to multiply the area of the base times the height. The idea behind this is, let's say we have, okay, so we have our hexagonal prism. All right, I have a 3D model here for you to look at. And let's say we can um, take off this base and let's compare what the base would be. How many bases would we need in order to fill this entire space? Okay, now what we would need to do is we would actually need to stack up the number of bases here that's equal to the height here. So the idea is in order to fill the space, we need the height times the area of the base in order to fill this entire shape with the base. So let's take the volume polynomial, or the, the polynomial that represents the volume and the height, and we're going to use synthetic division. to find the other factor. Now, since this is x to the fourth, we actually have some quote unquote missing terms. So I'm gonna rewrite it here as a reminder with the missing terms so I don't miss any coefficients. So now I know that I have four, three, two, one, and zero. The original polynomial only had an exponent with a degree of 4 and an exponent with a degree of 0. So now I can fill in my synthetic division with 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 16. Negative 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 0 is negative 2, negative 2 times 2 is 4, plus 0 is 4, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 0 is negative 8, and negative 2 times negative 8 is 16, and the result is 0. So my resulting polynomial is x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4 x minus 8. This is equal to the area of the base. 